When I was younger, when I was 18, uh, 19 years old, I had a job as a pyro loader at Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, working the Waterworld show. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, of, yeah okay. If you don't, don't know it, it's a stunt show with lots of explosions, and my job was to make sure those explosions happen. Um, and the set basically is a pool with a bunch of like metal towers. It's a metal set, it's all metal. If you haven't seen the movie, the movie's awful. Uh, good, but terrible. Um, but it's basically like a peninsula in the middle. They have jet skis and boats come around. Um, it's basically the plot of the movie. Uh, there's towers, stuntmen jump off, they get sprayed with water, and at the very end of the show, uh, the female antagonist shoots the bad guy with a flare gun uh, at the top of the, of the highest high dive west of the Mes Mississippi. The flare gun lights him on fire, and, be, and he falls off, and that's the and then the plane comes. It's, so if you guys go, spoiler alert, sorry about that. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that's the show. The show is pretty simple, the set's pretty simple, and my job was to make sure all those explosions happen. And the way that we had explosions happen, we had big ones that were like gas-powered, but then we had little fireworks, basically, right? Little tubes full of gunpowder and different metals and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, I had to carry a cart around with me in case I ever got arrested, uh, so that cops knew that I always had gunpowder on me, right? So if there was like a murder and they arrested me, I had to flash this little card that said, he always is, looks like he just shot a gun, so. <laughs> of course now, saying that out loud, I realize they could have covered up for a ton of murder, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, so in, in, there were, in that show, there were the most explosives that we had, or pyro pieces that we had for any other show, but the most dangerous pyro piece of the entire show was the one that set the deacon on fire. The deacon's the bad guy, by the way. Uh, it's like 1996, so I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Um, uh, the deacon on fire, because it was, um, the, the way the set looked was the highest tower, and then there was like a plank with some railing on the side of it, and the pyro piece was down here because the safest way for him to get lit on fire, and what he was wearing, by the way, was a kerosene cape. Like it was a cape that we just would dunk in kerosene, right? Or jet, more like jet fuel. And then he would lean forward, someone would hit a button, and then the, the flare would go off and set him on fire. And it was low. And so the number one reason it was the most dangerous piece in the park was because it was designed to set someone on fire. I mean, I don't, I don't have to explain that again. But the only way to load it safely, the way we were trained to load it safely, was we had to put on a safety harness, clip ourselves onto the railing, climb over the railing, and load it so that it was in front of us. Because you couldn't load it any other way because you get burned. And the thing about this job was that people got burned, right? And there were, people like, always want to hear stories about this job. Like, the thing is, like, we want the job to be as boring as possible, right? When something's exciting, someone's going to the hospital, which is why I'm telling a story tonight here. Um, so, it was the summer. We were, uh, I was 12 hours into a shift, right? We were on show number eight. And I, I know now that I, I don't look very healthy, but back then I still didn't look very healthy. But I was healthier, but I was running up and down ladders, carrying set pieces uh, all day. It was hot. Uh, you know, we had, I think, I, geez, I don't know, it was like five or eight shows. In, in like a 12 hour shift, I feel like we did like a show an hour, and it was a lot of work to do those shows. And so we were at the last show. That was the last thing I was doing. I just had to load this piece of pyro. And the way that I would do it was go to the very top and then work my way down. And so I start climbing all the way up, and I'm at the very top, and my arms are burning. I'm so tired. I'm ready to just, just go home. That's all I want to do is go home. And I get a call that something has gone wrong, and we have to stop loading. And they want me to climb downstairs so that they could have someone on safety watch. Because obviously, we're loading explosives. Because people had to watch. Because if you had a cell phone, and I had a piece of pyro open, like the wires open, that pyro could go off. And it happened. That happened. People would walk in like idiots with walkie-talkies and cell phones and things would explode in people's hands. But I was already at the top of the fucking tower, right? And so I go over and I'm gonna load this piece of pyro. And again, as I said, we were trained that we had to put the harness on, but no one wore the harness, right? Because only a wuss wears a harness. So I climb over the railing without a harness. Did I mention it's the highest high dive west of the Mississippi? Have I mentioned that? Uh, I climb over the railing and I load the piece of pyro, and I'm stepping over the metal railing at Waterworld, and everything's wet, and I'm super tired, and as I'm getting my foot over, it sl I slip. And I come down, and I slam my knee on the railing, 
and I barely grab on to the rest of the thing. And now I'm hanging over the railing from dear life. And by the way, nobody knows I'm out there because everyone else listened to the walkie-talkie warning and is backstage getting some sort of safety reference. And now I'm hanging off the edge of the railing over the set. And I have told this story and people always say, well, why didn't you just let go? The thing is, I wasn't sure where I was, right? I was a little disoriented, first of all. Uh, but also, like, there's set pieces below me, right? There could be set pieces below me. And I'm, if I had let go, I would have been part of, I could have been part of, like, the worst Plinko game ever, right? <laughs> uh, the other thing that I was worried about if I had let go um, was that I was wearing um, steel toe boots. And I was very tired, so if I you know, let go and I missed the set pieces and I hit the water, um, I'd have to take the boots off or I would drown because I don't know if, you've wa if anyone's ever had waterproof steel toe boots, water fills up like a balloon and it sinks down to the ground. Uh, and the third, I think most important reason I didn't let go was I didn't know how to swim uh, because when they asked me if I wanted to work at Waterworld I, and they said it's an extra $1.50 an hour, I said, of course I can swim. I'm like, goddamn Aquaman, I'm in the water. I lied, I lied. Uh, but, I, I, and that's why, but I'm hanging out there for dear life, and I, I, mean, I don't know if people have almost died. It happens often to me. Um, uh, I started thinking about all the mistakes I did, right? Like climbing over the railing without safety gear, uh, dating uh, that ex, uh, Rebecca, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I was terrified, and I, I started to pray. Like, I was really afraid that if I slipped, I was gonna hit set pieces, and I could break my leg, break my back, get my, I mean, even though like the, if I got knocked unconscious, which happens to me a lot, I could still die, because no one's there to see me hit the water. And I'm holding on it, and I'm praying, and I start crying for help, but nobody can hear me, because the stupid set is huge, and I'm finally, I finally make peace with myself. And I decided I'm gonna have to risk it because I don't, I don't know, I have nothing else to do. I don't want, I don't want gravity to take over and, and kill me. I wanna go out on my own, guys. And so I let go. I don't know how many of you have fallen so long that you can think while it's happening. <laughs> but it's terrifying, because I was like, I'm gonna die, and I'm like, oh, I'm still, I'm still falling. Now I'm still here water. Luckily, though, as I'm falling, I remember something the stuntmen used to say, that they had to remi remind themselves to clench their butt, because at that height, if they landed wrong on their butt, water could shoot up inside of you, and it could wreck you in your butt. <laughs> And so I clenched, and I didn't hit any set pieces, and I hit the water. I didn't hit it right, though, because I broke two ribs, right? I dislocated my shoulder, um, and I almost got fired. Um, but that's a story for another time. Thank you so much, guys. Oscar Sagastume, ladies and gentlemen.